Hello, everybody. Today, I'm going to show you how to upload your Christmas beetle sightings to our project on iNaturalist. iNaturalist is a global biodiversity uh, website or database that allows people all over the world to upload their sightings of biodiversity. It doesn't just have to be Christmas beetles. It can be any living thing from plants to fungi to insects uh, to mammals. It's a great platform for us because it handles uh, the data management aspects of the project for us. And in addition, it allow, it runs a very cool machine learning algorithm that will try to identify your sightings and really helps us cut down uh, on the identification time. Although our friendly project members will be on iNaturalist constantly checking identification. So don't worry if you think the computer is getting it wrong. Okay, with that, let's have a look. The first step is to download the iNaturalist app, which is available from wherever you normally get your apps. Once you have it, click on it on your phone and you'll go to your, it'll open into your home screen. This will show you a list of the sightings you've made in the past. So you can already see I've been pretty active uploading sightings to, uh, to this app. Uh, remember, you can use iNaturalist for anything. It doesn't just need to be Christmas beetles. Uh, and I find it a lot of fun to go on little walks and take pictures of the cool things I see around me. Now, when you have a sighting, you submit it to our project by hitting the observe button here at the bottom of the screen. When you do that, you'll get a whole bunch of options. Um, one says camera, one, and that one will use the camera built into your phone. I don't actually recommend taking sightings of Christmas beetles this way because it will only allow you to take one picture at a time. That's really annoying for taking pictures of insects, which are often moving around. Uh, and so instead, I suggest you use your photo library. So if I click on photo library, it takes me to all the photos I've taken recently. And as luck would have it today, I actually found my first Christmas beetle. So I'm very excited to get these sightings uploaded, uh, to get these sightings uploaded. So what you will do then is simply click on the photos that you want to upload. You can upload as many as you like. And for the Christmas Beetle Count Project, we strongly recommend, if possible, to get a photo of the top of the insect, the bottom side of the insect, its little uh, insect face, so the front end of the insect, and if you can, its rear. It sounds like a strange thing to request, but weirdly enough, a lot of Christmas beetle identification involves staring at the rear ends of beetles. Um, it's one of the ways we can tell some otherwise almost identical species apart. So if you can get those four angles, it increases the chance that we can identify your sighting down to the species level. Of course, sometimes insects are moving or you may not feel comfortable picking one up and that's totally okay. Uh, we'll take whatever angles you can get. So here I'm going to select uh, four different angles of my beetle and then I'm going to press add. Once I've hit add, you can see it takes me to the next screen. My sightings are up there at the top and you'll see a box that says, question mark, what did you see? And this to me is one of the coolest parts of iNaturalist because if I click, what did you see? It's going to run an algorithm that's trying to identify my sighting. It's not always perfect, but it does a reasonably good job of figuring out when you have a Christmas beetle. If you actually have a Christmas beetle, what you should see at the top is something that says Christmas beetles, genus Anoplug Nathus. Um, we're also looking for Caludes and Repsimus. So if you see those under genus, that's great too. Uh, it will then give you more detailed suggestions um, about the actual species. So because it's pretty confident that this is in the genus Anoplug Nathus, what I usually do is just press that button. Um, those, that first suggestion is usually the suggestion it is most confident about. Um, it will always give you some suggestions and it'll tell you whether it's like, oh, I'm not really sure what this is um, or whether it's pretty sure. So in this case, I'm going to press um, genus anaplognathus. Now, don't panic if you're not sure whether the computer is correct. That's fine because one of the cool things about INAT is that all of um, us on the Christmas Beetle team, plus many trained and happy amateurs, are out there going through the sightings, correcting them when we need to. So don't worry if you get it wrong, that's fine. If you're not sure that the beetle you have is a Christmas Beetle, that's fine too. Go ahead and submit because it's all data and we can use a lot of it. Okay, so now I've got Christmas Beetles in there as the identification. Uh, there's a few other things I'd like to show you here that are really important. The first 
is GeoPrivacy. So you'll notice that here it has the exact location, which I've blurred out for my privacy. Sorry, guys. <laughs> you'll see it'll have a location and that'll be very specific to where you took that picture. That location data is really important for us because it lets us know exactly where that beetle was taken. Um, and that helps us to build better maps of the distribution uh, of the insect and also helps us to understand how different types of land change like urbanization or agriculture might be impacting these insects. Uh, however, if you've taken a picture in your backyard, you might not want to have your address uh, right here and uh, visible to everybody. And in that case, you can go to geo privacy and change it from open to obscured. Obscured essentially blurs your location and puts it within a 500 by 500 kilometer box somewhere randomly in that box. So it's very difficult, if not impossible, for anybody to figure out exactly where that photo was taken. However, it's still good enough for us to use that data because we know that it's roughly within this 500 by 500 kilometer um, box of, of the location. So we can use it for some things. Um, however, if you're not taking a picture in a place that's sensitive, like your backyard or somebody's house, we would ask you to keep it as open. And that's because we can just do so much more when we have the exact locational data. It gives us a lot more um, ability to start asking more detailed conservation related questions. But again, if you're worried about privacy, go ahead and put it obscure. Your sighting is still valuable. <clears throat> the third option is private. If you press private, iNaturalist will strip away all of that locational data and will just get the sighting as a picture. Um, this, unfortunately, we cannot include into our project. And that's because we have no way of knowing where um, in the world that photograph was taken. So we ask that you please not use the private section uh, option. If you're concerned, uh, Obscured is going to be your, your friend here. Um, but in this case, I'll leave it as open. Okay, and that's really it. After this, all you need to do is press the share button and our project will, your sighting will automatically be included in our project if it was, if it's in fact a Christmas beetle. Um, you don't need, I know some, there's been some confusion because there is a project section down there at the bottom. Some iNaturalist projects are set up such that you need to specify the project when you're uploading it. Our project is not set up that way. Ours will automatically, uh, is set up to automatically include any Christmas beetle sightings, even if you don't join the project uh, or submit to a project. So all you need to do at this point is press share and that's it. Your sighting is now part of our database and is helping us learn more about these really awesome beetles. Thank you so much for listening and have a good one. Bye-bye.